So saving face, what do you think about the current market conditions and the recent crash that just happened? Well, um, I think we talked about it in the last video a little bit that we were expecting some type of pullback. Um, just because it was hanging around this area a little too long and we're a little too early in the cycle. Um, it really hasn't pulled back that much. It's it's about, I think it's exactly 27% or almost that's right a, at it. That's a very healthy bull market correction so far, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think uh, in the 2015 cycle or 17 cycle, whatever you were, you were like, uh, you would like to pick, we've had several pullbacks that were, I think, in the 30s. Yeah, yeah 34s. And uh, remember the 2019 crash, you know, the, from oh, 14K yeah. to 3.8K. Uh, 3. <laughs> K, and that was technically a bull market <laughs> crash. But yeah. Just out of the ordinary, it was like 70% or something. Yeah, it was. This was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. But to be honest, it was rough, and it. I'm sure it really sucked for the people that got washed out. But uh, I think it added so much liquidity to the market at that time uh, with all the orders mm -hmm. that it washed out. That that's mm -hmm. probably why we raised went up so fast is because we had so much of a washout. Absolutely. And if you compare those to like mini bubbles, that was a lot faster. You know, it took a few months mm -hmm. or so and we, we were already at 14K. I mean, if you look at the current price action, I do believe that there is a lot of room for con correction potentially here because technically we wouldn't be breaking the power law even if we crashed a lot from here because, this, you know, the bottom supports are low. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to crash as much as it did back then because it's been a lot more methodical and slower. This, you know, even mm -hmm. though it kind of looks like a parabola, you know. So, I mean, we have to be prepared for anything, you know. It, it could crash 50% or, or whatever. But uh, to me, that's just a blessing because <laughs> I'd like to buy cheaper Bitcoin because I'm looking at the ROI potentials because when you were at, when we were at like 70k that was not even a 3x roi potential if we were to mm -hmm. go to 200k but if we're going to go to 50k that's immediately that's 4x <laughs> if we go to 40k that's a 5x potential so i'm just salivating over this crash <laughs> <laughs> one two dca if it gets lower. yes same for me i i've been actually dcaing every day i set up a um automatic dca daily through the strike app and I've been buying every day and working extra hours just to be able to take advantage of this um, because there's still so much potential to the upside then. And I believe in Bitcoin. So, you know, as everybody gets worried about cycle tops and all this kind of stuff, if you just look at the history of Bitcoin, as long as you've been buying it, regardless of where it's at it's always been a good idea i've kind of you know talking to i guess you would say normies about bitcoin they ask like oh is it a good time to buy um i've got i've kind of came up with this where it's like it's always a good time it just may not be the best time so mm -hmm. if you can't deal very well with down draw like you don't you're like oh i'm losing all this money it's well yeah you you've held it for three months and uh, you you haven't seen explosive gains. So, yeah, you have the wrong mindset and you may need to do a little more research and uh, do some charting to see how long things can take to really set up and explode to the upside. Um, and it's better than holding any fiat currency ever existed. Mm -hmm. So... You know, Absolutely. you can't really go wrong with that. Yeah, we, we just have to figure out like uh, also what Bitcoin is going to do here because if we, you know, look at the next projected top in 2025 or so, right? Uh, you know, what is the path that Bitcoin is going to take, right? Uh, are we gonna mm -hmm. are we gonna just uh, oscillate here or are we gonna have a massive crash like in 2019? Like mm -hmm. Bitcoin needs to kill time. It, like, it looks like that. It doesn't want to go above that uh, medium like uh, resistance line there. So mm -hmm. there are many potential ways we could have some kind of very slow tapering off type of top, right? Like last time, but I hope that's not going to be the case. I hope we have that, you know, grandiose uh, blow off top, but we, for that, we need to <laughs> collect, collect some energy here and, uh, yeah, and stay, yeah. stay it, below those levels. Yeah. 
for sure. And I think also, you know, Bitcoin is synced up with like the liquidity cycles from the government, the U.S. government. So we have to keep in mind, like the interest rates are, are higher right now. And I mean, excuse me, uh, it does kind of correlate. Uh, so these uh, white little arrows are interest rate decisions. Um, so you can see kind of last time when we had this, the bigger crash going to COVID, they were actually cutting rates. These are all rate cuts. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that, that's a huge and, misconception that, uh, you know, the markets will go down if, uh, if they, uh, if they start, you know, increasing interest rates, but usually when the trouble comes and they, they have to start cutting the rates, that's usually when, when the crash comes, you know, yeah, so people yeah. just think about this completely the wrong way because there's always a huge delay in the markets. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, I guess if you want to be a little more conspiracy minded or you are like most trading and investing is you, you have to think of it backwards. Like Absolutely. In, in 2022, when Bitcoin's down at, you know, uh, 20,000 and 15,000 and people are like, oh, it's going to 12. We've, you know, I'm not buying any here. It's going to 12. It's like, well, listen, if you're not buying in the bottom zone, like, what do you, why are you even buying Bitcoin? You know, if you're just buying it to make a trade, hey, sure, you do your thing. But it's, pr history has proven that it's better to consistently get in at DCA in and then DCA out if you're going to be doing that. You know, it's not, there's no fixed point, you know, totally of agree. where. <laughs> uh, what's your DCA strategy? Are you doing some weighted DCA, or are you just gonna buy this equal, you know, amounts? Or what? Can I have a mm -hmm, me about your yeah. Account? I have an equal amount that I set up uh, for a daily something that I can afford that isn't gonna hurt me or put me out on the street if Bitcoin doesn't go up. You know, you have to protect yourself first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even though I'd love to spend all of my money on Bitcoin, I still have to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I'm set up enough to where it's not going to hurt me in the short run. And hopefully it benefits me in the long run. Mm -hmm. So you always have the same amount of dry powder to, to put aside for, <laughs> for buying some extra Bitcoin or uh, that's it. That's yeah. Well, the, the yeah. The, well, the strike app actually has a, uh, not that I'm like promoting strike. I do like Jack Mahler's. Uh, I think he's very insightful in Bitcoin. Uh, but um, uh, they have a feature where it they don't charge you mm. to DCA. Yeah, so I heard about that. Yeah, that they have. Some yeah, yeah. Options. So, mm -hmm. so basically, I just set it up and it pulls money out of my bank account every day and buys Bitcoin with it. And then, yeah, I haven't moved it to cold storage yet. But you know, after you know, maybe a month, once every month, I'll, I'll move it. So I don't have a bunch of, uh, what is it called? Like UTXOs where you're moving a bunch of Bitcoin several times and uh, creating different stuff like that. So I'll just wait and move it all at once. Mm -hmm. My own approach is a little bit, you know, I tend to buy a little bit more when it go, crashes more. So it's just, just uh, kind of increase the percentage. I have certain levels that I'm looking at, you know, the forties and the fifties. And so, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in general, I totally agree that the DCA should be the way to you know because you're never you're never gonna predict the bottom here. You know, let's face it, mm -hmm. because, uh, <laughs> there are so many potential levels it could go to, and uh, we just need to average down and get a nice entry and ride it to the next top, and then yeah. potentially take some profits. Uh, yeah, a lot of people I think too they underestimate uh, your average entry. Um, I think we talked about it some last time, but like uh, if you, I don't want to make my charts all freak out, but let's see if we can get the average entry for this. Yeah, so this is just this cycle and it's been buying once a month since we fell underneath the power law in 2022 at, what is that, $30,000 it's been buying every month. And your average entry is, I think it says it, yeah, 27,000. Well, basically 28,000. Mm -hmm. And it's just because, you, like you said, with, a, with a weighted DCA, you're getting more 
uh, Bitcoin at, the, at those lower prices. Yeah. At those lower levels, yeah, you're getting like I, I, I wouldn't if I threw out a number, I'd be lying of what it was, but you're getting much more, and that's why your average entry stays lower because you are buying through these areas, mm-hmm. and even though you're buying the same amount here for this application, even though it's buying the same amount here, it barely pulls up your average entry when you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I actually I'm always you know fascinated by these crashes, and I I'm actually excited because I they they always provide such a good opportunity because you know going up you know that's fun and all you know but <laughs> yeah, I always look at the future right and uh, I really you know for me what what the most important thing is the ROI like what is the X that we're gonna get for the next market cycle and if we if this crash goes further down I'm just buying more and more I'm gonna get a mm-hmm. better ROI for the you know look really looking for that four or five X right. Before we before we take some profits, of course I'm still gonna have my hodl portfolio that I will never sell, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> give it to my grandchildren <laughs> or something. But, but uh, yeah, uh, of course it's uh, as we've discussed before in some of some other videos. It's it's a very good idea to take some profits. Also, you know, uh, when we do finally get to the next top, and uh, just you know to be able to buy more Bitcoin. Yeah. 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 I mean, if everybody's gonna have a different plan. One plan's not going to really work for everyone. Um, and it, it's important to kind of build your own and fine tune it specifically for yourself. Um, because depending, like, say somebody that has like 10 Bitcoin, well, maybe they want to sell one to buy two at the bottom. Or try to, you know what I mean? Take a gamble, go, okay, I've gambled on Bitcoin this long, so I'm going to take profit on one and, uh, you know, also budget out, budget out my taxes. What is, what is that going to be on my taxes? What am I going to have left over? And if I do that and then hold it for one year and just reinvest it again, I'm turning that one Bitcoin into two Bitcoin. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that could be a huge, you know, a huge gain for someone that really needs it or whatever, but you know, or, or you could be totally fine in your life. You're making plenty of money at your job or your career and you are not trying to uh, exponentially grow your, uh, your Bitcoin. You're just buying and continuing to buy. Um, then, you know, you, you just buy and you hold and you, you know, you potentially uh, don't buy as much at the top and buy more at the bottom. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I'm that's, pretty sure that's what Sailor yeah. is doing. Usually people freak out about these crashes, right? They look at it only negatively. Like even, mm-hmm. even, even the people who didn't sell, like just think about it like this, you know, eventually it's going to recover again. Use this time, just you take an extra job, whatever. Get some extra income to add to your portfolio, even if you didn't sell, right? And you will bring down your average price again. You, you know, you don't need to sell technically at these uh, levels when there's some kind of bull market crash. Exactly. Or whatever. You can just uh, try to work harder, earn some extra income, add to your portfolio, and just you will forget about this crash eventually, right? Yep. Because it will recover. It, will, it will always will. What do you think? What are your What's your advice for the people who are freaking out in the comments? Um. So. I think there's going to be a lot of different reasons, but I'll just throw why people freak out. But uh, I'll throw out a couple. You're you've bought too much Bitcoin, and you've put yourself in the position to where if Bitcoin doesn't go up, you are going to be hurting financially. Uh, that's a potential reason, and then uh, or it's newer people that have bought, and then they're not seeing the return as fast like maybe they're new n- new new they they bought at seventy thousand dollars and um uh, and they were expecting it to jump right up to 90 after that and it didn't and now it's pulled back and they don't have an investment mindset to where they're going oh well i'm uh basically when I started, my plan was I'm buying this and I'm going to hold it for at least four years. I'm going to hold it for at least one cycle. And the cycle is not done yet. So if you are wanting returns instantly, 
you know, it's it's going to be very hard to get that satisfaction from Bitcoin right away like that mm-hmm. unless you just time it perfectly. So my advice is to sit back, relax, you know, go chill and don't ever expect a, an immediate return out of any type of investment. Just like with anything, you have to put the time in for like a business doesn't immediately grow overnight. On average, you have to spend four to five years building a business for it to be uh, very profitable, you know, after that. So uh, just take your time. Don't think that it has to be in one day. If you, if, if that's your mindset, you potentially are too over leveraged, even if you're not using leverage, you're Mm -hmm. too over leveraged in your financial life. And maybe you need to cut back on your investing and handle some more personal stuff. That's perfect. I totally agree with you. Also, you know, people get some uh, perspective the longer they are in the market, because at first when you join and buy Bitcoin and the next day it goes down 5% and you're just completely freaking out. You don't have any context, right? You don't know that this is normal. But if you've been in the market for seven, eight, ten years, like we have, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. (laughs) you you just, you know, it's just another day, you know. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like we were talking about, you know, it's like it, it's been up here for what was it like three months? Mm-hmm. It, it's sitting around seventy thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and it's more excited. It sucks for some people, but it's more exciting now that we have kind of broken a range, and we may be making a new one, or we may be having a a downturn for a little while that m- it gets Bitcoin cheaper. And, and then, like you said, it's going to recover. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. I've always been in the, the boat to where I've decided I am betting on Bitcoin and the, the technology that it brings and the security that it brings to financial markets. And I'm going to hold it regardless of where it goes. Absolutely. So, What's the better alternative, fiat? Yeah, yeah, yeah there, you know, the old Michael Saylor, there is no second best. There really is no nothing better that you could hold over time than than Bitcoin. There, what has it been? It's almost 15 years now that it's been out. It's yeah, still, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a little kid financially wise. Like it's still like a child, but at the same time, it's proven itself cycle after cycle to that it's better to have it than not so that's i've made my decision last cycle i'm like man i'm kind of done searching for these altcoins that may do a hundred x and all this other kind of stuff it's so much work for in my opinion that is i don't know it's just something that i don't enjoy doing so i find it useless Mm -hmm. it may be very profitable to other people but for me you know hopefully i'm not offending anyone but i think it's useless to try to do all that work to potentially just lose most of your money hoping one of the altcoins that you pick out of 50 may work um but uh i just prefer i would just prefer not to think about it and just Mm -hmm. buy bitcoin (laughs) absolutely absolutely especially in the long term you know (laughs) Yeah, yeah yeah for sure Mm-hmm. Well, just a look, uh, we were kind of talking about it uh, before uh, we started the video. Like the altcoin market has gotten destroyed. Yeah. Uh, like I think Caspa is doing okay. But man, I was looking at some of my other altcoins and I do have some because I know people. And I was talking to Giovanni about this, but uh, I have altcoins because I know people will look at Bitcoin and say it's too expensive. And they'll buy altcoins because that's what I did. <laughs> so I know I have some altcoins because I'm like, hey, well, you know, I'll put some a very small portion of of my money into these altcoins that uh, you know somewhat have done well for the past couple of cycles. If they do well, great. If they don't, I don't want to think about them. But uh, yeah, I mean, they. I don't know if I can show like a weekly change, but man, it's been uh, it's been rough on the altcoins. That's uh, always the case. Months. Yeah, during mm-hmm. the, during these bull market crashes, yeah, altcoins also bleed the hardest. You know, they usually start pumping towards the end of the 
or the bull market, right? And even after Bitcoin peak, sometimes the on altcoin season, you know, is a little bit delayed and happens after that. But yeah, for now, it seems that Bitcoin is just leading the market and mm -hmm. altcoins are following and they're just getting dragged to bits yep. by Bitcoin. <laughs> Yeah, after this cycle, I'm 100% done with altcoins. I like I have no desire to hope they make it anymore. You know what I mean? Like I'm 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 already done with them now. I haven't been buying any altcoins. I haven't bought any altcoins since 2022. Uh I bought most of them back then and I'm like, okay, if they go up great, you know. <laughs> if not, then I should have put my money into Bitcoin. Absolutely. In Bitcoin, we trust. <laughs> I think we both agree. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what is it? Uh, I, it's trustless. trustless you, you don't, absolutely. Yeah. Correct. I stand correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure talking to you, Saving Face. That was an amazing discussion. <laughs> Thank you for your insights. Should yeah, no problem, man. It was good talk. <laughs> yep. Take it easy. If you wish to support the making of our videos, research, and indicators, you can join one of our very affordable Patreon tiers and gain access to our Power Law Trading View indicators that help you understand where we currently are in Bitcoin's market cycle. In addition, you get to join our active Discord community, teeming with fascinating discussions and online lectures. We're looking forward to meeting you on our Discord server. This is Saverio speaking, and as always, thanks for watching.